you want to be happy in your life, great, you're in the right place. I think this important topic deserves a deeper discussion than we're used to having. If you went back more than 2,300 years ago to Greece, you would have heard the philosopher Aristotle call happiness the ultimate end and purpose of human existence. And Aristotle knew that happiness required specific choices and actions. It depended on two things, love and reason. In the next 10 minutes, you'll find out how Aristotle's time-tested ideas can bring you more happiness, as they've done for many people. Let's start with love. The word philosophy means love of wisdom. Philo is love, and Sophia is wisdom. That's one kind of love. But there's many others that you can have. Love of family, love of friends, and the deepest kind, romantic love. Hopefully you have some first-hand experience in one, two, or maybe even all three of these categories. It certainly brings more fulfillment to your life the more love you have in it. But actually, not all love is filled with joy. There's one type in mind that has a frustration built into it, and it's termed after Aristotle's teacher, Plato. Plato thought that the mind and body were constantly at war with each other. Aristotle rejected this as he rejected most of Plato's ideas. But the popular description of it today is called platonic love. And Aristotle also said that any kind of love starts with oneself. If you don't love yourself, it's really hard to love somebody else profoundly. How about reason? Aristotle was first to identify reason as the one factor that distinguishes humans from the animals. He calls us rational animals. That's what's lifted humans from shivering and crouching in a cave to walking on the moon. Reason is responsible for every scientific and technological advance, from the skyscraper that I'm in today, to smartphone technology, wireless internet. All the comforts and luxuries that bring joy to our lives come from the reasoning mind. Okay, let's move on to happiness and see how these ideas come together. Personally, my own happiness reached an all-time high exactly five years ago. That was when a beautiful philosophy professor and brilliant Aristotle scholar named Carrie Ann said to me, Robert, what I love about you is how reason makes you happy. It just pours out of you. Wow. I had the same exact feeling for her, but she put it into precise words in a way that I hadn't done. And I thought, someday I want to give a speech connecting these three concepts together, love, reason, and happiness. That day is today. Later on in our discussion, I said, sweetie, how about when the semester ends, you and I go to Greece to see the places where Aristotle glorified happiness. Pretty romantic, right? Most guys would want to take their sweethearts to see the Greek islands, but not us. We want to see where Aristotle was born, where he died, and most importantly, where he flourished. She didn't answer it once, but her face had a smile like I'd never seen before. Then she said yes. Have you ever anticipated a trip with a loved one that you knew you'd never forget? You might remember what was happening in Greece in the summer of 2015. Banking crisis, protests, riots, and we were warned to be careful. But my thought was, we have wireless technology and smartphones, we'll be fine. But if you were with us when we arrived in Athens, you would have seen worn down buildings with graffiti all over them. 
old men sitting out in the street without any hope. Young people wandering around without purpose. I wanted to shake them and say, you are in the cradle of Western civilization. Doesn't that matter? After we passed the fifth bank that had armed guards in front of it, I asked our parking attendant if we'd see protesters. He said, no, it's too hot for the anarchists. They're all out lying on the beach. One morning we got up early and went to a souvenir shop and we bought this Aristotle bust and Aristotle magnets, bookmarks, postcards, everything, we just the entire stock. I went to plunk down on the counter and the vendor looks down and as I'm taking out my money to pay, he says, we have Plato too, you like? And I said, Plato? Plato represents the cave. We came from New York to celebrate the light of Aristotle. Boom, keep the change. Imagine being with us when we arrived at Aristotle Square. This was a busy, bustling area that was surrounded by shops and restaurants, and right smack in the middle stood a statue of the philosopher. And we wanted to get a closer look. And Carrie said, look at the graffiti on the pedestal and the teenagers leaning against the statue, texting each other. It's disgusting. I said, let's come back in the morning when no one's around thought, is this what happens when the cradle of Western civilization abandons reason? The next day, Eureka! Carrion found the best kept secret in Athens, the Lyceum, the school founded by Aristotle in 335 BC. Recently excavated, uh, beautifully man manicured grass with walking paths, scent of the jasmine trees and the buzz of the cicadas in harmony just set us up for the perfect environment and as we sat down in the sunshine munching on grapes I reached out and took her hand and I said this is the ultimate end and purpose of our existence and she smiled again that same smile I'd seen a few months earlier I thought this is where Aristotle taught his students about logic, rhetoric, poetics, politics, perhaps most importantly, ethics. His work on ethics starts with the statement, every rational activity is aimed at some good. How would you like your teacher to tell you that? For the first time in history, human knowledge was set into a comprehensive systematic process different categories and classifications. Never before had this been done. Always grounded in reason, always held up to the one question, how do you know? That's an important question you can ask yourself about anything. And if you can't prove your answer, can you claim it as knowledge? And should you act on it? Visiting Greece proved to me why I'm so happy to live in America. Because here, effort and achievement are rewarded, and there's hope for the future, if we still uphold reason. So that you can do more, gain more, enjoy more in life, I recommend you read Aristotle's works, especially his ethics, which provides a blueprint on how to actualize your potential. As we wrap up, Keep in mind that your own happiness is in your control. It is the ultimate end and purpose of your existence. Knowing this and acting on it consistently can lift your own spirit from crouching in a cave to walking on the moon.